welcome everyone. Thank you, ladies, being on time, awake, present, incredible work. We know why we're all here. We're having a virtual forum about our uh, Global Day of Creative Action. Uh, so you were all participating or involved in some way. Hi, Wilson, I can see you. Uh, and it was incredibly successful. So there were 90 works across, across 27 different countries that happened within a 24 hour period, which was certainly more like 48 hours from Fiji to Hawaii. So a uh, big shout out to all the people who uh, helped us make that happen across social media and kept that 48 hour period rolling. So we're gonna have an online exhibition of all the works launching on the 2nd of November. And that's another important uh, thing that I think that we're doing, which is we don't wanna be artists that are just putting work out in communities and walking away. Sometimes that's really great, but a big point of what we're doing is where we come back, we reflect, we take stock, we unpack what's happened, and then we rebuild it and put it back together again. Uh, in terms of how can we build upon this, how can we make more impact, what worked, what didn't work. The traditional debrief process, but coming at it from a little bit more of a creative, innovative angle, hopefully, through some really interesting discussions and presentations. So I wanted to share with you, the other day I was listening to Helen Clarkson speak, she's a CEO of the Climate Group, and she said something very simple and very basic, that this conversation about climate disruption has been happening for over 30 years and nobody's paying any attention. And what she said was, I've been working on this for a long time and what we've really found difficult is to get any sort of interest from the public because it's always seemed like, yeah, it's in the future and it's probably a bit far away. And I feel like one of the things that we certainly achieved together was that we managed to make it real, it's tangible, it's something that's happening immediately, not just out the front of the UN, it's happening everywhere, in your city, your village, in your street, and we all have a role to play in communicating, talking, putting it into the front of the minds of everyone in our community, people who are already converted and people who still need some convincing and information. She talked about an action gap, and I feel like this day that we all participated in uh, closed that gap just a little bit. There's a big difference between even getting people to believe this is occurring and if you can get them that far, how do you get them to start making simple changes like don't use plastic bags, which is reasonably ineffective in the overall story of how to protect our environment, but at least it closes that action gap. And I feel like all the work you did, no matter how big or small, it certainly closed the gap even further and I think in a really powerful, intimate way. And many of you put art about this subject where art has never been before, especially those of you working in developing countries. And I think that was some of the most powerful stuff. And those of you who have a higher online profile or you're more uh, established as artists or you're working in spaces that are more used to this kind of thing, you being present for that as well, really, really leveraged all of those people who are working in places like Kenya and like the Philippines. And I think it really supported them. So really well done. A little bit of housekeeping uh, as more people keep joining us. Uh, I don't know if many of you are familiar with Zoom. I'm kind of like semi-familiar, so there will definitely be mistakes and debacles throughout this next hour. But uh, if you want to ask questions uh, during the periods of time when questions are possible to ask, uh, you can turn on your mic uh, and turn on your video if you like. I think the mic would just be better. Uh, but you can also chat. So you'll see if you look down below, there's a chat speech bubble. You might have to move your mouse. There's a chat speech bubble which you can click on and it'll give you the option to chat to the whole group if you just want to put out ideas to the whole group. Or if you want me to ask a specific question on your behalf, I can do that. The other uh, thing that you can do is if you want something, like if something you feel like something needs to be interrupted and it's not uh, exactly maybe the exact right moment for it, there's a raise your hand. Uh, component at the bottom of the chat and that'll alert me you need to say something quite importantly um, yeah put your mics off you're all doing great with that uh, you don't want to be the person like on the keyboard or whatever uh, and when it's your time to present if you're doing the Pecha Kucha style presentations I've got all your presentations here I'll put them on the timing they're already timed 20 seconds so I'm not gonna be able to stop it you're just gonna have to keep rolling stick to time um, but you can take your, you know, you can be casual. You don't need to start saying the next thing the next time the slide comes on. Don't worry, it's okay. Uh, when we're doing the panel discussion, 
uh, turn your microphone and your video on if you don't mind. If you really don't want to put your video on because you're in your pajamas, that's totally fine. But um, yeah, I think put your video on if you can. Uh, any questions at this point in time about anything that's happening? Yeah, thumbs up from everyone. Hi, Roz, keep. Yay, so impressive. Eco Warrior from Hong Kong. Very cool chick. Okay, so without further ado, uh, and everyone can hear me okay, right? You're not just watching my lips move thinking she's insane. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move to a shared screen. And first up, Christina. Oh, Christina, Christine, you're gonna, yeah, I don't know. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna start. Okay, look at me and my fancy shared screen, everyone. Now, if something is wrong, you can't see it or whatever, let me know. Okay, so Christine, Tim, do you wanna just put your um, mic on so we can check we can hear you? Mm, I can't hear you. Can anybody else hear? Your mic's off, hang on, I think I have the power to unmute you. I do, look, you're on. Can you speak? No, see, the debacles begin. No, you're still, uh, hang on, unmute. I do have, I have power here. Mm, here you go. There Hello. You. Hello. Hey, hey. So everyone, meet Tin from the amazing Alima, Philippines. And she's gonna talk about now, uh, six minutes, 20 seconds on each slide. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Dream up presentation, but I, I like it. I think it's exciting. Are we ready? Set. Begin. Hi everyone. I'm Tin. I live here in a town called Barotak in the Philippines. So I love listening to stories and retelling stories. I think poetry is an underrated tool to cultivate emotional intelligence. And I love being outside. Um, so the moment I realized that art should not be contained in galleries and museums was very powerful for me. I believe in art that is shared in the communities. And when I stepped into that limitless space, I felt really powerful and I want to do something more. So I am the co-founder of Alimo Community. I founded it with my boyfriend, Mars, and our social mission is to share art as an immersive experience, as an embodied development for the self, for the community, and our natural world. So yeah. Mm. And uh, we are the conceptualizer, conceptualizers and the serial organizers of this massive street art and public art event and um, a movement in Iloilo, that's uh, our region in the Philippines. And it's like a unifying platform for artists from different walks of life, different styles. And we also collaborate with rural artists and rural makers. So these are accessories. Some are made of our organic materials and the other pieces are actually made out of each trash. So this is like also like a livelihood uh, project for women in faraway villages. So I'm really grateful to be here and to be part of micro galleries. As you know, Philippines is the topmost country, very vulnerable for climate change. And it's really frightening, like what happened in 2013, Typhoon Haiyan, or locally known as Yolanda, hit the Philippines and yeah, it, it has wounded us. So. Uh, in 2013, this is where uh, my childhood playmate Tiko and his three kids lived temporarily after the typhoon. They stayed here for three long months and it's a very unsafe space uh, near the road. And it's not only him and his kids. Thousands of Filipinos lost their loved ones, lost their homes, lost their livelihood. And even until now, we carry that wounds in us. And um, it's really sad and um, it's very distracting. Um, so because of community spirit, we were able to rebuild a uh, more decent space for Tiko and his children, that's Bam Bam and Bim Bim. And so we contributed money and other resources so that we could provide like a better shelter for them. So they actually live two houses away from where I am right now. 
And so they are the inspiration of our entry, which is like a narrative installation. Um, we started by uh, gathering uh, shirt donations from the local community. And the drop off point is actually my mom's eatery. She cooks very well, by the way. <laughs> um, so it's a very surprising thing in, in this small town because it's not common. But uh, people were so kind. They sent their old fabrics, old T-shirts. And uh, I received some questions through my Facebook about it. And so we gathered the donations. And it was very, very humbling. So uh, my partner, Mars, was the one who envisioned how the narrative installation would look like. So we made it very simple because we're working with Tiko and his children. And we made sure that it would be easy to understand and easy to materialize because um, they, they don't really like work us a, a lot of time. So this is Tiko, uh, Bim Bim, Bam Bam, and Tintin. And these are the shirts donations. We chose this location because this is like our favorite local beach and local families go there for their uh, weekend excursions. So I think it would be like perfect for, for the message. We made sure too that um, in the conceptualizing process, even the kids had something to say. We listened to their insights, their stories, and we made sure that the entire narrative included how they feel about it, how they think about it. Um, so this is my cousin, Lesser Shun. We had to fly to another part of the Philippines for a national forum and invited him to facilitate uh, when uh, when we are away and he did a marvelous job so I'm really grateful for him to be uh, uh, for being there for helping Tika and the children so the simple motion of wrapping these trees with this donated cloth represents our message that we have to protect our local forest because in doing so we also grow forests not just around us but within us and it's a very simple act. It's, a, it's an ancient act, but it's also like a forgot, forgotten act. And this image represents how we can be stronger as a community, how we can be stronger if we could, if we could include everyone in the dialogue, what we could do as a community to protect our families and our, um, our children. Um, and this is Tintin. And... I think we're very humbled that as artists, we get to work with children and with people who have zero exposure to gallery art because it is when we truly are able to include them to the conversation, to the message. Um, and this image represents Saga Saga, our narrative installation, which represents the essence that at the end of the day, all of us, we all just want to come home somewhere safe some were beautiful and some were harmonious. And um, this image represents our commitment in a Lima community to bring art closer to the communities and to include everybody. Because we believe that when we create something together, it is when we feel included, it is when we experience something, it is when we feel that we have the power to change something or transform something. Thank you. Wow, well done, Tin. You're so amazing. Congratulations. It was an incredibly beautiful work and hugely successful and very moving and powerful and I think very empowering, perhaps, for the people who participated. Do you think so? Yeah, I, I think so. It's like, a, a, it's, a, Tiko is actually an artist, so he's like one of my earliest influences, but you know, art being tagged as something only for the rich in the Philippines, he was not able to cultivate that. So being involved in this artistic installation was like very refreshing for him. And it was very beautiful to just see them and to make people around curious. So it starts um, important discussions for uh, like, you know, like rural communities like ours. Brilliant. And People aren't seeing work that's happening out there. So it's really great that we can start to spread this. Awesome. All right, Thank we're going to have uh, questions for all you guys at the end of this little segment. 
so we'll leave it there. And okay, Wilson was messaging me. And can you, Wilson, I can see you. Can you see us now? Oh, this is not positive. I'm going to unmute. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm, cool. I'm okay right now. I'm from Kenya. I'm very impressed. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm good. Great. All right. Well, yeah. what I'm going to do now is put your slideshow on and share it with everyone. And you can see. Right. That's fine. That's fine. I'll do it. Great. All right. Clocking over. Give me a second, True. Uh, okay, and yeah, Wilson, just a reminder, this is just going to go 20 seconds in time by itself. So here yeah, yeah. you go. So, so the day we decided that we'll do a bit earlier, so we started by preparations and everything. I'm just skipping just to everything. My name is Wilson, and... That's for you all for pulling this day. This day touched my heart. This day touched my heart. So uh, we started earlier, earlier on Friday. That's when we decided to start painting uh, the cardboards. So that when we entered the site at on Saturday, it would be just straight to the artwork. And it was very, very, very. It, it was an enjoyable day. It was an enjoyable day because. Uh, we had to tackle these issues where trees are being cut and everything. And these little actions that we have, that they are the ones that are contributing to the climate today and the issues that we're facing around everything, food, insecurity, and all that. And that's the message I wanted to, to display. This was the sketch I, was, uh, I did in the morning. That what was what was on my on my mind, so that I could express the way that I felt and the issues around this community that should be tackled at first, and it it leads to that that the sun is too hot for us and we need to hold up down the trees so that uh, the trees that carry all the plantation that they should not die and every uh, coming together is the only way that i saw change coming because because uh they lead to the solar the harsh suns they lead to lack of food and uh people are not harvesting like maize here i don't remember the last people had a good harvest for maize so the food we we are suffering because of food because uh, of climate action and people are destroying it. The girl represents hope and the butterflies represent the seasons that were there. The seasons that initially in, uh, coming into a new season, uh, the butterfly would flock here, like fly away and then, you know, it's a new transition. So the girl represents the little hope that we have for future things to come and uh, having dreams to think about. It's a bottle top uh, butterfly too. I made that for. Uh, it's a. It's. I made that because seasons come and seasons go. And right now, where we are with micro galleries, they are looking out for the artists. Like people are still there. They do here, but they want to neglect everything. And they are peeping on both ends, where people are cutting their hair where corruption is there, they're there. And they want to bring the, another face to people that encourage people, but yet what they are saying, it's not what they are doing. And our actions have really, really destroyed us because uh, cutting down of these trees will lead to low shortages of water. And the cycle, just breaking the cycle at one end, uh, the whole system is corrupt. The whole system is corrupt. And... We are affecting many, 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 many animals in the in the wildlife. Like the elephants are going extinct right now. Some more animals out there are going extinct. And I want uh, kids in future not to hear stories like we, we do hear of dinosaurs that they were. Uh, if you want a kid to see an elephant, you take them to see the elephant. On that day, the the path we were working on a path so everybody that passed there and asked some questions others scared others didn't so these people decided uh to listen to what i was doing and when i explained to them they decided they said that the government will do that so how long will we keep pushing to the government and 
come back to ourselves and say, I can do this, I can create change, and I can make things possible. So people are there, as I said, so they listen, but they don't want to hear. They hear, but they don't want to listen, I'm sorry. So, but if they could take action into their hands, they could uh, bring about a new thing. And people, as I said, like that guy walking there, he didn't even care, he just looked and then passed away. And he went, he didn't even want to hear what I was saying, but uh, the change is there, but we have to act on it. We have to work on it. Uh, on the same end, our actions, we don't care. We've, we've reached a point that nothing is to care about. So even when you're dumping trash out there, you just don't think about uh, the next step or the causes that you, it will, they will bring and everything. And changing that, we would want to see uh, beauty in fish, uh, the nature that is there. There's so much beauty in nature and people don't see that. And people don't want uh, to accept the fact that a lot is happening and it's either they do it or they perish. So uh, currently I'm in a nation where uh, we are dying because we are black. We are being killed by our black people. So. I wanted to speak about Africa. So that's the piece and it's unfinished. Actually, I took it by candlelight. Uh, we didn't have lights at my place. And we are too blinded. We are too blinded because we are too blinded because uh, we need to open up our eyes that we can see uh, greater things in a small perspective. A lot, a lot, a lot changes but it's a load we need to carry every every person needs to have this load so you have to own it to accept it in order to in order to achieve something i know there are a lot uh, i might have not a lot uh, of information on what i'm saying but i believe uh, the small pieces we all have we can make change that's my father my sister and the kid i teach art it's called he's called uh, he's called my, and those are the people who did your, the project on that day. They were very happy souls. It's called Robinson. Yeah, I'm also an art teacher for kids. Thank you very much for having me. So um, I believe. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you too. You're absolutely amazing. Um, so many of us are working in difficult circumstances. You really are working in difficult circumstances. I mean, if you feel like you need to draw by at night, like it's just incredible what you see. So thank you for sharing that with us, getting the people that you you have around you to join in on that. I think it's really amazing and important. And yeah, we'll take we'll take some questions for you later on. Thank you so much for putting that together, Boris. Uh, just gonna mute you out now. We've had a few other people join us, so welcome, guys. We've had a couple of our presentations already. Uh, we've had Tin from the Philippines, Wilson from Kenya, and now we're going to pop up with a bit of contrast. Olga, who... Hello. Uh, <laughs> oh, poor thing. I'm so sorry. She And you know when I was doing the Times, Olga, I knew if someone had to take it for the team, you would do it. it would give me the least amount of grief. So thank you very much. She's got up very early to do this, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so uh, Olga uh, was one of the people who signed up uh, to do Adam Kubi's Sea Level 2080 project for us, and she did it in Venice. Uh, so it's a nice, interesting contrast because I think a lot of this project is uh, we've really focused on vulnerable, climate vulnerable countries, which often coincides with being a developing country, but obviously places like Australia, the Great Barrier Reef, and Italy with Venice, they're definitely feeling uh, the absolute immediate consequences of climate disruption. So we're going to go to you, Olga, now. I will flip it over. Oh. Let me, sorry. Ah. Technical. Oh, and Vivian has joined us. He had a few tech difficulties. I think he's here now, though. Oh, no, maybe he's still not. Oh, no, I see him. Yep, great. So we've got our full team for the day. Okay. All right, Olga, on your marks. Get okay. Oh, no, hang on. Uh, it, Zoom does this really annoying thing where I cannot see the, um, if I get it wrong, I can't see the slideshow thing. Okay, great. Okay. Everyone can see. We're good. Off we go. 
Um, hello everyone, my name is Olga. I'm Italian and in love with Venice, the city where I was lucky enough to live during my studies. It's unquestionable the fact that climate change and the consequent impacts will not manifest equally damage on the planet, but it will assume different peculiarity. It was very significant to me to perform Adam Kubi's sea level 2080 in Venice, and I'm very happy to have the opportunity to share with you what Venice will face and how the past 21st of September Global Day of Creative Action was perceived by the local team. Um, quick fact. The scientific community agrees on the fact that Venice will be underwater within a century so if the emergency of global warming is not taken seriously in consideration and the sanction flood defenses will not be immediately installed. This is uh, the famous St. Mark's Square. And um, this is the beautiful team who joined me during the day. Um, we learned about the many projects happening around the world and how many different people also living in vulnerable countries take the opportunity of uh, this day of action to raise their voices and concerns. And it was uh, like a beautiful sunny day, really in contrast with last year when an incredibly 1.5 meters of high tide covered the 70% of the city. It was the first highest ever recorded in centuries. And the research says that the ancient and iconic city will be flooded because the Mediterranean Sea is forecast to raise by up 140 centimeters. This is the Lagoon of Venice and is considered a very vulnerable system because of its unique features the artistic and cult cultural value, but also for the extremely particular ecological value. Although some long-term residents have been moving out of Venice, the target of rising water and rents driving up by international tourists, other argues that the future of the city is too precious to give up. We've been hosted by Serena from the art space Bottega Gibigiana, and together we recruited the, the coolest Venetian gang to walk up and down the Zattere. We specifically chose this part of the city for some reason. It's a place where local people, students and tourists do peacefully coexist. And because there is a very hot debate about cruise ship passing through the canal just to wave high to St. Mars Square, but instead to create a wave surge which demonstrated helped the erosion of the building and the scene of the city. Instead of the installation, we chose to perform a sea level 2018. And as you can see, a lot of kids joined us. And at the beginning, when we explained what would happen and what would happen if they, all the ice would melt, and they were very responsive and very worried. So we agreed to let them lead the way. What happened was that when the kids were playing, um, the kids were playing as if the fabric really became the actual sea level, peeping and calling out loud what they were imagining. And all of a sudden, we've been in the same dimension. So the fabric suddenly became this blue entity, calm and rough, plenty of animals or legendary heroes. At the end of the performance, I asked for feedback. And it was important for everyone to have had a brief introduction about the global context we were framed in and to have some up-to-date information about sea level rise. This gave to all of us the opportunity to stop and be stopped by some curious passerby. Um, we all agreed about the powerful simplicity of the artwork and its open source nature, which made it easy to connect straightforward with everyone who chose to be involved, but also to include and create awareness with people from different backgrounds. During the Biennale, Venice is used to street performances. Very often is overwhelmed by art events. During her interview, Anna, one of the artists, said that during the walk, she really perceived something meaningful happening. And the message to the public was really effective. The value of the social message was really was going through. And the perception this time of the performance, it was different. It wasn't only for the art itself, but it was like a signal, easy to transmit and to be perceived. This action was very important for this reason. And of course, we took the opportunity offered by the day to talk about the role of art. Some people involved are local artists, as I said, and at the end, we all agreed to the feeling of emergency of responsibly creating works which deliver a social message. 
I found important that everyone felt the need to express how worried they really are and the sense of the global community and the simultaneously context that we acted in and how the engage we were able to generate that created such a positive way back to feel like it was a wake up call. And last, as many kids participated, this means the parents were also there and wanted to be involved and set as an example. As much worried as they can be, they all agreed that during the day they felt positive vibes and hopes. Of course, they underscore the important part of education and how important it is to take opportunities to create awareness in every aspect of our lifestyle and make the difference starting from small actions. And I want to finish saying that people are now moving and new generations can have hopes. And I feel like this photo is really significant of the day. <laughs> this is our host and Anna, a local artist and illustrator. The space behind is uh, the Bottega Gibigiana, where the, art, uh, where the artists make art uh, with the recycling uh, objects. I don't feel like that. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, the fabric, uh, the blue fabric. Uh, of um, We choose a dark uh, color also for being contrasted with all the bright blue around us. And uh, as you can see, we were quite a big crew, actually. That's it. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Olga. That was amazing. It looks beautiful. Venice, amazing. Okay. What we're going to do now is take some. Uh, oh, that's this thing. Hang on, sorry. So, Vivian's just to drop this in. Vivian is having some really huge tech difficulties in Indonesia. He, he can barely uh, get on. Uh, and I see that Jana has appeared. Hello, Jana. Fantastic. And Jana, I'm wondering if I can throw you into the deep end to be one of our panel members, because uh, your work was actually hugely successful with your kids, and I think you would have some great things to say. So I'm going to assume, Jana, that the answer is yes, and keep going. So you have like five minutes to prep yourself. Uh, I'll give you all a heads up. The panel discussion point is how can art help imagine and engineer a better future for us all? And um, I will ask some specific questions as well. And it's just a chilled organic conversation. So no stress everyone. But, uh, and you can all feed in at some point. That'd be great as well. Uh, so Jenna, I'm assuming you're gonna be okay with this. Um, yay, see, look at us. Organic grassroots rolling with the chaos. Okay. I'd like to point out though, Vivian, if you can hear that Wilson in Kenya has better Wi-Fi than you. I'm just saying. So, do we have any questions for our incredible presenters? All it was so diverse and amazing. I'm very impressed. Would anyone like to make a comment? Anyone have a question? Wow, you guys were comprehensive. See, six minutes, twenty slides. Hello. Awesome. Yes, I have a question for Wilson. Go, Roz. Hey, Wilson. I'm in Hong Kong. Uh, I just oh. wanted to say how lovely I thought your work was. Um, did you, you leave you. all the paintings? Did you leave the paintings there when you finished? Yes. Great. How amazing. I, well, I'm walking around my mind. studio. I, yeah. Hang on. Uh, I can't hear you. You can can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? So uh, yes. after I finished yes. the paint, I after I finished the paintings, they they stayed on the walls for hours, and people came by before before we we decided to leave. And people are very amazed on how it looked, but they didn't care about the message that I was trying to portray to them. So that yeah. I saw that that's the same experience I had. I I, I saw yeah. the same. I I, I, I I had the same feeling. Uh huh. <laughs> Sorry. But I was happy because yeah. they left. They left knowing. They left knowing. Uh, I decided. Uh, so they 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 got the key point of 
uh, the climate is changing and everything is coming to us, but I hoped that uh, even when they see they can remember, uh, there's something they can do to change something. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Thank you, Ace. Uh, question? Yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, so many of the work had to be taken down within 24 hours, which is good and bad. It's good in the sense that it enabled more works because more people were able to participate. People are less threatened by work if they know it's going to be removed. Or they at least have the option to have it removed. Um, and right. many of the works, like particularly the mobile works, have stayed up. Wilson, I think like even just presenting that message, you put it on a high traffic pathway, every day people are going to go past and see a different component of it. It's such a positive way for people to slowly absorb an idea and be reminded daily of an idea. So though they might not immediately yeah. be willing to take upon uh, a message like you were trying to deliver upon themselves, they are slowly observing it over time and coming to terms with it and seeing it in different way. And loads of research has yeah. Even if, let's just mute your mic when you're not talking directly. Um, even if, uh, even if the work is, is is not to their taste, engaging with art does certain things to your brain. It's still a very positive experience overall. And the way to incite change on this subject, psychologists are doing loads and loads of research on this. It, because no one can understand why no one cares. Why after 30 years of this being said over and over and over and over and over by a range of industries, still, even now, no one cares. Like we're seeing all of the vitriol that's coming out for people like Greta and Extinction Rebellion. Why are people still not caring enough? In Australia, they're threatening to take away social welfare for anybody, anybody on social welfare that takes part in Extinction Rebellion actions. So why are people still needing to be convinced? And psychology is showing that it's because it's been so apocalyptic in terms of how it's being approached by scientists. Whereas I think what we were trying to do and many other artists are trying to do is something from a much more positive angle and psychologists are showing that that is way more effective. So even if you feel like nothing happened initially, you're, built, you're starting, you're breaking the ground, you're building momentum. I think it's great. Any other questions before we move on? We can do more questions at the end as well if something occurs to you. Okay, we're gonna move on to our panel. Just assuming, Jana, you're cool. So uh, could all our panel members turn on their mics and microphones? Uh, so introducing Sarah from Hello the Mushroom, UK. Erin. Hello. <laughs> Hello, there she is. I just, funnily enough, was looking at those of the seagull. That was brilliant. So it's quite funny now that you're here talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Erin <laughs> from Sampaka Collective Malaysia. Erin, <laughs> okay, I can see you're on. I can't see your audio. Oh, great. Um, Vivian. Are you going to try and participate? I can try. Can you hear me? Yeah, but it's really, really, really loud. I can hear you a bit. Yeah, I'm going to make okay. it for you and mute you. You're out. <laughs> Do you want to just have a listen? And maybe if you have any input that you want to give, you can do it via the chat and ask it for you, Vivian. Um, I hope that you can hear that. I will mess up with my phone. Okay, Jana, we're going to have you jump in. Is that okay? Yeah, what an incredible people you are. I love our people. You're all so amazing. Okay, so Jana's from USA. Erin's from Sampaka Collective in Malaysia. Hello, the mushrooms. Sarah is in the UK. So we're going to roll. And we're going to ask one of you at a time. Um, I'm, so I'm going to moderate just so we don't have people speaking over each other. So you can mute your mic and then come in as I ask you a question or if you want to jump in. Everyone else, please mute. Uh, we will have questions at the end that you can ask. All right, so we're going to start. Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice, just to kick off for those people who don't know? Okay. Hey, um, my uh, street name is uh, Hello the Mushroom. Uh, I'm a street artist. I usually work um, in uh, occasionally murals, mostly uh, paste ups. 
Um, I do a lot of work normally around uh, women's rights, like <laughs> a way to put it. Um, also, um, how women are treated in social media is something that I'm very passionate about, <laughs> particularly um, Instagram, etc. And um, yeah, and a lot of my work revolves around that. Um, <laughs> right. And uh, it was a uh, a challenge to uh, do some uh, differently themed work for the the day of action because uh, um, climate change is not normally something I would uh, do um, on focus on my my artwork but it was very interesting to get out of my uh, usual comfort zone and do I also consider important to talk about <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay. I'm going to throw the same question at you, Erin, just so we have like the whole panel introduced to everybody. So Erin is from Malaysia. Yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Erin uh, from Chipotle Collective. There are uh, four of us uh, and including one of our puppies. Uh, we are an anarcho-feminist collective based in Kuala Lumpur. So we started new as the collective and we started like August last year and all of us have different kind of work, activism and expression of art previously. So previously we were more focused on organizing and intervening um, especially among authorities and action. This March where uh, Oh, uh, Erin, I think that we've lost you, or is it me? Oh, oh Erin, there you are. I think okay. you, just, you just broke up for a little bit. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's mostly our work, and we are very uh, happy to join uh, this Global Day of Action because this is one of many topics that we have never tried before, and we are glad to be part of it. Great. It's, it's interesting, like both of you have now said, uh, this is a, you, you're both so active in your areas of interest, women's rights and uh, gender studies and uh, you know, particularly you guys are in Malaysia, things like abortion and, and women's rights, uh, LGBTIQ plus issues. And yet climate hasn't come into those, which is quite, it intersects with all of these issues in its own way. So it's been really interesting to know. Okay, Jana, we're gonna flip to you. Sorry, Vivian, I don't know if you're still here, but I hope that you're still listening and you throw in some comments. I know you're gonna have some great things to, to contribute. Uh, okay, so Jana, do you wanna just say hi and introduce yourself? Sure, um, hi, I'm in Austin. It is- um, Oh, you have the best Wi-Fi of everyone. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's the LR tech here. Yeah, there, and uh, that's why I have my, my camera taped, all our tech, I'm always scared of like. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm looking no. cameras around me now. But it's like 1.30 in the morning here, so I'm sorry if my brain is not working. Um, um, I also have never really done anything with the, the climate action. So this was really exciting for me to take, to take this into consideration and to take this into trying to involve my children into, in it. And, um, and uh, so yeah, because I typically paint. I don't do paper mache. I mean, all of it was very exciting for me. So I had a fantastic time. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. And so, Jen, just tell us a little bit about the work that you normally do. Um, it's just, I paint. I typically paint, um, like, just, that's, I mean, that would be kind of what I would get going there and then just paint from that. So it would be very two-dimensional. So to take all of this in a three-dimension and, and make, make a, a video, um, I don't know, it was really exciting. It really was, it really was. Uh, I had it, it's been on my kitchen table for a month doing the paper mache and the kids would come through and they're like, what are you doing? And I'd explain it. And then it was like, you know, to, to bring them in to see something come from nothing to an idea to to fruition and then be, have them become a part of it. it was like oh now I can see it now I can I can understand this because we have um, I have four children and we have constant conversations about about gender about um, about race about um, 
uh, equality financially. I mean, just the, the politics, everything, but to, to put things into action um, it makes a big difference. I think that's a huge difference. So. And just referring back to that action gap that we talked about at the beginning, uh, there's a lot of discussion happening for those people who weren't here at the start about how you get people informed, but then there's still an action gap between having the information and actually doing mm -hmm. anything about it. And maybe one of the most important things we're getting from this right now, what I'm hearing is the slow closing of that gap in our own small ways. Great. Okay. So why don't uh, we talk a little bit about the community response to your work? So a really important part of what we were doing wasn't just about creating work to put out there or do an exhibition, but it was about putting it in a community and, and hoping for some kind of reaction, positive, negative, or indifferent. Um, so, Erin, uh, how about we start with you? Can you tell us just a little bit more specifically the work that you did for the day? And then what was the reaction from the community? Erin's left for a coffee. I am here. I'm so sorry. I am, uh, yeah, yeah, I unmuted you. You should all be careful because I can unmute you. So if you're in the background going, oh my God, I can hear that maybe. Just keep that on board. I'm like Zuckerberg. Okay, Erin, so tell us about the work that you did and the community response to that. Yeah, so uh, what we did for the Global Day of Action was we did waste based installation based on the adaptation of our famous local nursery rhyme. So the, the, the reaction to it was people started singing around us, like they were laughing because that's not exactly how the song's supposed to be like. But definitely the biggest, um, I would say, response to the action is um, some people called up on authority for us and we and we were attacked by police and the authority on that day while we were doing while we were doing the installation. So um, it it caused a little bit of like um, interruption and so. And then um, they also threatened to uh, arrest and detain one of our collective members during that time. And um, we 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 proceed uh, and say we negotiate with them because we had to. But I feel like the biggest thing is uh, because uh, when we were during the Global Day of Action, it, um, haze issues in Malaysia and basically Saudi Arabia see we need to address haze in Malaysia. Uh, a lot of people uh, have a bit connected. Erin, we're just we're losing you a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off your video, and so we can just hopefully hear you. Uh, and I think that will make things a bit better. Um, so, is it better now? Oh, gosh, yes, that's much better. Okay. Unfortunately, you'll have to look at me. Um, so, Erin, you were just saying, I, it broke up for me, you got to, and, and can we just pause for a moment as well and just thank everybody who's speaking in a language that's certainly not their mother tongue. So many of you, this is your second, third, fourth language, so thank you and all the Wi-Fi tech difficulties happening all over the world. So thank you so much for assisting and everyone for your patience. So um, Aaron, where I lost you was, um, or did I just get stuck on it that somebody got arrested? So I didn't realize this. Um, so you were talking, you negotiated with the authorities uh, and then you were talking about something else was happening on that day. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we what we say to the authority is we will pay it back. And uh, oh, it's really yeah. devastating to, so we spend a lot of time to be able 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 to be no, I think, look, I think you're breaking up too much. So what, what we might do, can you type this for me? I'm going to mute you. Can you just type what you were saying for me and I will read it out to everyone because I'm desperate to know now what happened. Um, and 
I'm going to question the Wi-Fi in Indonesia and Malaysia today. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hand over to Jana. Do you want to just talk about, um, was there any community response to your work? I feel like you got some really good response online, actually, from the work that you presented. So um, was there any community response or interesting response from your kids who were very active in putting together that work? Um... Let me go back. Um, sorry, again, it's 1.30 in the morning. My brain is starting to shut down. <laughs> um, I, yes, I had, um, I have a, a, a transgender child who um, very much wanted to be a part of, of something for this. And she, it, it's all, this is all just, sorry, coming out and coming to play. And um, so she really wanted to be a part of this, but wanted to leave school in March, but did not feel safe about certain situations. And so um, this, I felt like allowed her to have something. She's 14, very vocal, very intelligent, very adamant about speaking out, very outraged. And so for me, I guess it felt like me just giving my child the ability to find a way to speak out um, and, and express her, her feelings um, in the situation. So even, even though that wasn't from the community, that was personal, which I feel like I hope gets translated in some way um, to, to other people. Um, I think so I would say really right there. About that, that it's, it, climate disruption is, and, and these huge social issues that are going to certainly affect our next gen people. It's such a, a, a big high level political issue and yes, ways your work yeah. brought it down to the personal and how the personal can create action, which is how the Greta Thunberg phenomena has even occurred. Right, right, yeah. Parents to act. Like, yeah. Coming back to the idea of closing the action gap in, in our own small ways. Um, so that's quite, quite powerful. Um, <laughs> thanks for sharing that. Excellent. So, yeah, yeah. Great. Erin's message through that um, they found out last week their installation has been completely removed by the authorities at that place. And she's sorry for the internet connection. Uh, it's not your fault, everyone. Don't worry about it. Okay, so um, we're gonna go to the next uh, question. And I would like to know, Sarah, just getting into the heart of it now, get ready. How do you think that the arts, well, do you think the arts can create meaning for people about really large issues and how? Um, yeah, uh, I think it, uh, art is a good uh, vehicle to um, create meaning. Uh, um, as uh, Jana was saying as well, uh, how uh, people can use the art to express um, how about um, issues, in particularly this the, this issue. Um, I think also it can be a different way of uh, creating awareness. Um, like for example, in in the specific uh, case that uh, of the work that I was um in london um basically we what i did was i uh, created paste ups in my usual um visual style but featuring facts about climate change and the uh, facts that relate very much to the uk um in the hopes that when people uh would see that on the street because they put it up in an area where there are a lot of tourists and there are a lot of people who go on, on specifically to hunt for street art and everything and take pictures, you know, that kind of thing. And um, on the hopes that at least uh, would be a, a different way from to spread the facts of, about climate. Uh, because I also understand that uh, sometimes, uh, as you were saying, this uh, apocalyptic um, way that it's being um, uh, talked about can be a little bit off-putting for some people. Um, and uh, so hopefully, <laughs> it's a way of uh, making people at least think about what they are uh, looking at and maybe prompt them to read more about it or or something <laughs> really like 
anyone who's been to London that's interested in street art on any level or heads over to Brick Lane and takes all the photos and exactly. on Instagram. And what I like about what happened with okay. you and some dudes work is you're putting it up like over the top of some of the, you know, amongst all of that, like a stock standard street artwork, but with a message yep. to it that makes exactly. it become part of an, just an everyday conversation. So no matter what we're all doing, this conversation starts to happen. I recently read an article about how they were saying that they don't think artists are going to be able to do any artwork in the future without this coming through a lens of climate disruption and the environment. It's going to intersect with everything, which is probably quite hard for us to understand right now. But I, now it's on my radar. I see it's starting to happen. It feels like it, it, it's hard to ignore anything happening in the world and not tie it back into the fight for resources and climate disruption and climate refugees. And so I think the more it becomes part of an everyday conversation for our kids, like with you, Jenna, for communities who are, you know, just doing street art tourism and all of a sudden they're provoked into thinking about big social issues. It's really powerful. Okay. Um, okay, so Erin, we're gonna flick back to you and hopefully um we'll see how you go, but if I mute you, you can just I'll ask the questions, you type your responses and, and I will speak them out loud for you. Um so let's have a go at this. Here we go. Um I wanna know that you you're having a lot of trouble with getting uh you know you're in a really rigid environment in terms of public art and people uh on their own volition creating public art so do you think art can be a form of civic engagement like yours and and be able to help people think about their lives their communities in different ways Okay, can everyone hear? Um, yeah, so definitely I think, oh my God, I think. Oh uh, no, I think you're just gonna break up a lot, which is quite difficult to listen to. So I've thrown that question at you and I'm gonna give you a minute to respond to the text and then I will uh, read it out. So let me throw the same question to you, Jenna. Do you think, so you are living in a country that's known for its uh, desire to maintain freedom of expression. Uh, but simultaneously in a process of shutting it down. <laughs> uh, dare we talk about that? I feel like that's too big an issue to add on to yeah. So what would be really great is just to hear how in this intensely political environment you're living in, where as one of the world's self-proclaimed superpowers, um, how are you seeing art is used as a form of civic engagement and a potential way for artists to put through forward reimagining? A different way of being especially right now oh wow um thanks for just joining us at the last minute at 1 30 a.m no pressure yeah no 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i i am certainly um privileged to be in a city like this where there is funding and the i feel like you know the arts are are all around. I was at a, an event the other night talking to somebody who wheat pastes and I said, so like, what is, what is the rule on this, the law? And he was like, oh no, no, you can totally wheat paste however you want as long as it's on public property. And I was like, wow, what a privilege. I mean, some, that doesn't exist but everywhere. Karen, right. That they put right. up. I'm not sure if you, you guys recognize the work. It was on a lemon colored wall with black and white wheat paste wasn't huge and i it didn't feel like it was you know at the front of a major major tourist area or something yeah and they got shut down rapidly so yeah it, yeah it's quite the privilege yeah. yeah yeah to be able to just to just the, the the freedom and again austin is very liberal so again another privilege there um so, uh, but it, it's 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 a heartbreaking what's going on because I'm concerned for our country as and as a representation of just you know I feel like in a way it's been very eye opening that what is ex, what ex, we're seeing has always existed and now it's being brought out into the forefront and so after when our election happened I kept seeing a lot of people posting and saying, this is when artists come out. This is when artists speak up. And I was just like, okay, how is, where am I going to see this? And I see it now in little things in um, documentaries and movies and things that I feel like are so many different ways in which artists, not just visual, are bringing these little, little 
even subversive ways of just putting the facts and the information out there for people because you know you might watch a, a, a hip-hop documentary and so there are younger people who are watching that and they're gaining information about things and about the past that they might not so i i find that that is very refreshing to see that 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 kind of stuff is that that because of the situation it's not like everybody just gave up and it's not like everybody is also being very um very angry and very spiteful or about it all it's just okay let's bring forward some facts and let's educate the podcasts that are out there uh lyrics and music art um I mean, just, you know, any, so many things. I just see it in so many little subliminal ways sometimes. Um, but I'm, I'm so grateful that there are so many people out there that are, that are doing these kinds of things. And I think, Sarah, that was brilliant just to put these this little facts up just everywhere. Because, yeah, like you said, people are out there just taking pictures. Oh, this is cool. And they might not even know that that information was there. And then later on, it's like, boom. Whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I must admit, I really agree with you there, Janet. Sorry, you're, I don't yeah. know if you guys, it was, it's a very colorful collage work where I believe the statement, and Sarah, obviously you would say this better, was, uh, basically referencing at one point this summer, London was hotter than Malibu. Um, I believe, yeah. is that yeah. accurate? It wasn't even the summer. <laughs> it was February. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Which is more worrying, you know? Yeah. Um, now that you bring that fact up, I was just thinking about uh, what Wilson was saying earlier about how uh, his community is so affected by the climate change and, 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 and he sees it and suffers it from the lack of food and, and the problems that it brings. And, uh, and for a community such as London, where we are so disconnected from the food production process. Absolutely, yeah. And everything. It, it, it's very easy to, to think, oh, this is something that is just happening far away in Africa. Here, we don't see anything. But actually, when you look at the fact like that, that tells you, this is not normal. It was warmer than Malibu in February. And think, actually, this is happening here as well. You just don't see it because you're not involved, you know, with crops or, or anything, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's <laughs> what I and wanted to say yeah, about that. That's a fantastic point because, again, the, one of the biggest problems in communicating this issue, I know I've been putting this out there, but to reiterate it, is that the problem they're having is it's too intangible. It's happening to other people. Wilson, it's happening to you. Tin, it's happening to you and your people. You, in your beautiful presentation where you showed where that man was sleeping with his children for three months. We were all in Nepal last year where we saw uh, a woman who had gone from a three-story Nawari house. She'd been sleeping under uh, a, a basically a kind of makeshift tent for three years. So things are happening to people and it's all interconnected, all these environmental tragedies that are occurring that are affecting food sources, that are affecting water levels, sea temperatures, and they all become part of a, a feedback loop that speeds up everything else and eventually will make its way to us. Unfortunately, the people with power and who have the most prominent level of uh, platform in the conversation are the most privileged amongst us. So I think that by doing this project and by a, a, a poster being wheat pasted up in London, lends support and resonance to what Wilson did in Kenya. It all starts to resonate across the world, even in our own small way. And it, it was really important. So in terms of like imagining and engineering a better future. So there's a lot of discussion that goes around about how one element of what makes art so important is that artists are so innovative and creative and not restricted by uh, corporate mindsets, for example, or a boss who's telling them what stats they can release. How do you think we can use this platform, these skills, whatever your practice is? How, can, how do you think we can use that to imagine a better future, to put an image or an idea into somebody else's mind? So if we go again back to Wilson talking about people were walking past this mural indifferent, or Wilson, were you creating a picture of how we need to start thinking, how we need to think about how the future could look? How are we able to construct and engineer a different outcome to what we're being told is currently happening? 
anybody can jump in on that uh, from the panel. Or Vivian, oh, and I wanna go back to something Erin has written me. Erin, I can see that here and we'll go back. But, and if you wanna type a response, Erin, and maybe Vivian, if you're still around, I can't see, you might wanna feed in on that question as well. How do you think artists can engineer, present, imagine a different future that can help other people begin to have that same vision? Silence. <laughs> That's not hopeful. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get in about this. Uh, um, I actually like as I'm working now with uh, many people, and uh, all these people are uh, involved in the creative industry from a different kind of level, and I see different sort of uh, awareness. Uh, and it's a bit scary when uh, everyone just keep talking and they don't act. Um, so I've been uh, trying to find a way that uh, you, you don't have to point the finger because uh, as a result, I see that there were no results at all. But instead I keep talking like uh, as, a, as a, a discussion that cannot be avoided in any situation. So, what happened to me was uh, even during the last um, exhibition that I organized, uh, when I had to invite scientists and uh, teachers, uh, and they were uh, sort of uh, all of them closing the office, uh, but they were so willing to come out and uh, share their knowledge because they see that uh, very often, uh, even if they provide all the information uh, to people who manage the administrations of the city they don't actually act they take the book and they just put it on the shelf they were very happy to work with me for this reason because uh, somehow they just felt that they didn't know me at all they didn't ask for any references but what happened was that they need the urgency to keep uh, putting out information so you just put out information and uh, somehow it's just like seeds some somewhere they will grow and I think artists can uh, and the way that we are doing this is just this way of like making uh, wild crops of knowledge around the world well Tin I think you've met your soulmate haven't you everything she's saying I was like Tin's gonna love this thank you Olga that's I love that idea of uh the scientists and everybody with the knowledge have been planting these seeds, putting stuff out there, but they can't get it to grow. This, it's not getting traction, which is definitely something we've been learning over the past year or two, isn't it? That we're hearing from scientists that we've been working with that we've got all this information and it's all incredibly important and terrible, but we can't communicate this. So I think in terms of being able to take that information, translate it, communicate it, act on it, and show people what they can do, that there is hopeful ways to make change and to imagine your future in a different way. I think artists are particularly well positioned for that. I want to read out some text that Erin has sent. Okay, so um, just going back uh, in terms of civic engagement and how people, uh, are people engaging? Do artists have enough uh, power within their own communities to get people to engage? She says there are different forms of civic engagement uh, and we are believing in a different type of expression. In Malaysia, one of the most famous discussions and discourse on art is, oh gosh, I hope I say this right, Erin, sorry, Seni Untuk Seni versus Seni Untuk, I'm never going to say this right, I'm such an ignorant white person, Mas Yara Kat. Yes. The, oh, good. Here's a literal translation, which I should have gone to, art for art versus art for the people. And it's been going on, uh, ongoing since pre-independence era of the 1950s, when artists and art collectives were making art as propaganda tools to push for Malayan independence from the British. Uh, sorry for our UK listeners, you probably shouldn't have done that though. We believe, in, uh, we believe that artists have some sort of privilege in expressing themselves to the masses. Well said. So as artists, you have got a really great chance and medium to speak up for the causes that you believe in. And there's always, always people who will interpret your art according to their own interpretations. I think, uh, yep, in Malaysia, I think now this is answering the next uh, question that we were just talking about, the idea of engineering and, and, and imagining future possibilities. In Malaysia, the line between political arts is always blurred between the media, self-censorship, 
uh, activists and NGOs playing it safe and artists doing the artwork with a subtle hint of political messaging because they can't go all out or they'll receive complaints and get banned or arrested as you recently experienced. Uh, okay, so when they joined, when Erin uh, says, when we joined the local climate rallies and strikes, we noticed that there are a lot of creative banners and placards made by the rally goers to address their concerns and to demand climate justice. They use striking colors, puns, memes, inside jokes that can only be understood by Malaysian locals, all made from recycled and handmade placards. We would like to think that our arts, uh, our collective acts as the bridge between the arts and activism, as we work closely together with local climate action organizations and environmental collectives. I think you raise a couple of good points there and I just want to um, pinpoint a couple of them and then we'll have final comments from the panel. I think uh, one thing that you mentioned here is uh, becoming a bridge between arts and activism. Again, we go back to closing a gap. So artists are incredible at working collaboratively. We're, we're trained to do it. Um, some art forms more than others, like music and theater, live performance development. Um, visual artists are also often work collaboratively together to create works we're really uniquely placed to cross over into collaborative work with different industries. I think it's a bit of a superpower that we have and something we should maybe take advantage of. But you did mention earlier, Erin, um, the idea of um, when fighting for independence, that art was certainly used as um, a, a, a propaganda tool. And I do recall another one of our artists, I think it was Rachel Honnery, had said um, to me at one point, yes, but we must always be careful. We don't simply become the translators for scientists. That's not what my art practice is about. And I think that was kind of where I was hoping we could get to with this panel discussion that we're not just about translating data or facts, as important as that can be if we do it in innovative and creative ways, but it's about bringing people together into the discussion, making the information accessible, sure, but also taking the next step and showing people how things could change, how things could be, to put the picture and the reality up there for them, just like a sci-fi movie would. How can we show them other possibilities of how to move forward, but also taking in mind that psychologically working in positive ways certainly has much more impact on people for long-term and sustainable change. So uh, just to wrap up this panel, uh, does anybody have uh, from the panel? So uh, Sarah, uh, Jana, Vivian, if you're hanging around, you want to throw in a comment. Erin, would you like to make any final comments? So the subject of the panel again was how can art help imagine and engineer a better future for all of us? Would you like to make any closing remarks? Um, how about we start with you, Sarah? Uh, as you were saying, I think art is very important um, in imagining the future because we translate uh, what goes on in our imaginations into reality <laughs> and uh, hopefully that can inspire other people <laughs> to imagine their own <laughs> their own future. And, 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 and uh, I think um, one of the most important things is to give hope. Um, because uh, a better future is possible and sometimes um, the, the, the message is, is as important as it is to uh, make sure that people understand how much uh, of a problem uh, it can be a catastrophe. Also, it is good and it is important to remember that uh, we still have hope and, uh, and uh, we can work towards, <laughs> towards it. <laughs> it's not just, ah, I'm going to give up. <laughs> it's not going to change anything. You know? like you, we saw so many beautiful works from that day of like the nearly 100 works that emerged. We saw so many hopeful works, which was, I mean, I think Extinction Rebellion is necessary and great, but there is, and there's a lot of creativity involved in that as well, but there, it is purely disruption, civil disruption. Yes. And I think sometimes people can find that overwhelming and quite negative, and there's always going to be a faction that's negative. And so I think something that everybody who participated in this project did extremely well was to engage in this in such a positive way to bring people forward, hopefully. Um, so I agree, yeah. Erin um, writes, uh, we believe that people should not be afraid to join in, in making art because they don't know how to paint nicely, but rather focus on our feelings and emotions towards addressing these issues. 
I think that's really nice. Like it's an accessible platform where everyone can express themselves. You don't need to be a scientist, have all the data. And you know, we live in a very extroverted driven society. Maybe you can't join Extinction Rebellion or have the guts to say to your parents, I'm going to sit outside parliament house every Friday and not go to school. Some people aren't in that position to do that, but everyone is in a position to draw something, create something, sing something, write something and put it online. Uh, and I think this is a really powerful thing that we can all be doing. Uh, okay. And Jana, would you like to make a final comment? Sure. So I, I say the same thing is as uh, I, I feel like, I'm um, sorry, <laughs> my brain is, <laughs> um, <laughs> is, is that, that, um, this, I, I agree completely with both Aaron and Sarah is that we, we have, I, I also, I feel like it's overwhelming. Um, what, when you start looking at everything and you start hearing the years counted down and stuff like that, it can be very overwhelming. So for me, um, I just keep looking at, at my children and feeling like that for me, just, just bringing them into the conversation and bringing them into the actions and bringing them into the awareness. And they, they actually make me more aware of all this than, than I am. And so I feel like just the constant conversation and the constant um, letting them be active, letting them speak out, letting them feel like they're a part of this. Like it's, it's their world. It's their time. They need, you know, to step up and, and be a part of all this is very important. And also I have to say thank to you and to everybody because for them to be a part of something, this, for me to be able to show, look, we did this and look, it's gone out and now it's a part of what somebody did in Kenya and what somebody did in Malaysia and what somebody did in, in you know, it was, it was very, it wasn't just like, oh, okay, we just did this fun little video with mom. It was like, no, this is happening all over the world. There are people all over. So I think that too also helped make, make them say, okay, every, there are other people who are caring about this. And so I'm very grateful for everybody. Um, for allowing us to be a part of, of this and for everything everybody did was amazing. So thank you. <laughs> well said. Thank you to everybody who, who jumped on the panel. It's obviously very difficult to have conversations, global conversations like this. Um, so everyone, exceptionally good work. Well done. Um, I think just to finalize what you were just saying there, Jenna, I think if nothing else, what's been happening over the past year has shown us that the kids are more educated, informed, active work than we potentially ever were as kids. And they're very empowered and that we should certainly be encouraging that as creatives and bringing them into to what we're doing, our projects, into consultations. Tim, you were mentioning that you talked to the children that you worked with. Um, being conscious of that practice because they're so informed and so active as they should be because clearly we cannot trust uh, the people leading to to be doing what needs to be done and they are demanding it so i think it's really great you brought your kids into it my poor son is just being forced into it whenever i can make him so yeah i think i think it's a really important part of what we're doing so um now just in uh the last 10 minutes um what i thought i would do is open it up uh to everybody and uh what i thought we would do zoom has a really cool little uh whiteboard so i'm assuming you can all see that if you can't see the whiteboard that's just gone up um if you could just turn on your mic and let me know uh and everybody can contribute to this whiteboard so i thought what could happen is if you just want to throw in a question to anybody who's presented or anybody who's on the list of people listening uh to me to anyone um or if you just want to write anything on this whiteboard about things that you think were really great that emerged from today expected and planned or otherwise um, things that we could do better, things like as a collective, a global community, things we could do better, things that were excellent and we should hold on to and keep and, and share with other collectives and other people around the world, things that worked that they could also potentially be doing. So um, you can say it and I'll make notes uh, and it works as simple as this. Woo, notes. I'm assuming you can all see that or somebody would be telling me otherwise. Uh, or you can actually uh, jump on and draw yourself if you're not somebody who uh, wants to say anything out loud or anything like that. All you have to do is go to where it says annotate. Um, and if you can't find that, just let me know. It should be obvious and then you get a toolbar pop up. 
So I'm going to open it up to you guys now and um, yeah, just jump in. Any, any initial thoughts or feedback on anything you've heard? Any questions? Have you all gone home? I can't see any of you now. Okay, I'm gonna write action gap because I think that was one of the big things we kept coming back to. Uh, not yet, not yet. So I, I think everything lands to, uh, to that we have, we have to create in order for people to see and keep on pushing it that it, it has become so common that uh, it's it's so hard to to wipe it away. So to, uh, yes, yes, for it to become so common. Great. That's awesome. loving the love hearts. Whoever's doing that, hilarious. Thank you, Wilson. I I think that's a beautiful. I mean, I think we're getting a heap of quotes here for our own memes. We have to create in order for people to see. Perfect. Love it. I I, ha I want also to add that we shouldn't be afraid to collaborate. Um, so um, the limit that I had as as a poet before was my dream was to publish books, um, and I realized that in publishing I publishing books are good, but it's limited to literary enthusiasts. So if we are uh, if we open our our minds and our hearts that it's possible to collaborate with communities with our starting with our own communities i think we can make make amazing things happen beyond ourselves yeah agreed well said tin thank you um I was thinking like uh, so many things happening and I'm really looking forward to the online exhibition. Probably the zine, it's also something that uh, should be like um, really speak out all the works uh, and the collaboration that uh, they are just constantly growing. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, sometimes I feel uh, Instagram and Facebook is not enough and nobody wants to scroll ages down to find the uh, what they were interested in. and so maybe the zine can be really a windows to to keep track of uh, the next and the past steps great yeah i'm loving the zine ogie's just done such a great job with <laughs> pushing it off the ground it, like we're all astounded at how amazing it is so um and I think what's really important about things like zines and podcasts is they're actually platforms where traditional platforms uh, weren't creating space for people in diverse communities or with diverse opinions. You know, if you weren't white, male, middle class, you weren't getting a voice. And things like zines and podcasts are actually opening up new audiences, new pathways, new ways of communicating with people. I think they're really, really important. Great. So uh, Ryan has just joined us. May, and for, oh gosh, what's happened now? I've lost, oh, incorrect screen. Uh, here we are. So Ryan's just joined us. Think, oh, come on tech, work for me, baby. Uh, you're at the end of what we're doing here. So oh, man, how come that doesn't go at the front? Uh, so what we're doing is we're just wrapping up with the whiteboard. Can you all just see the whiteboard or can you see all the hundred things I've accidentally just placed over the top of it? Anyone? I'm seeing it. Can you see all the different screens? I'm going to stop sharing and then go back and do it again. Okay, so um, just any other feedback? Haha. <laughs> I loved it. It's brilliant. Oh, Ros, you're great. It's brilliant. I'm writing it. It's quoted. I've been painting while you've been talking, everyone. Have you had such a good time? Ultimate multitasking, getting injections of inspiration from around the world and putting it on canvas. Well done. Can I show you? Uh, let me see. Yeah, hang on. Okay. I'm um, just turned. I'm just turning it around. I don't know if you can see any of these. Can anyone see anything? Oh. 
can you see them? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, look. <laughs> yeah, that's powerful. We're, we're painting on styrofoam box lids and um, here's some more behind me. Uh, and we're doing a sea level rise protest tomorrow with Extinction Rebellion members in Hong Kong. Oh, nice. I've been wondering about Extinction Rebellion in Hong Kong. I'm surprised I can get above the noise at the moment. Um, I know. I'm uh, terrified. <laughs> yeah, those of you uh, happening, Hong Kong is going through some pretty significant civil unrest and it's actually escalating rapidly and becoming quite dangerous. So, yeah, I'm surprised that they're doing anything, actually. But, um, yeah, good on them. Okay, so we've just well, had... Adriana I... has written in... Um, <laughs> disruptive sorry hang on just to read it out for you the disruptive art we're creating is an answer and approximation for a shift of systems it's much needed uh artists and communities are creating actions everywhere and we need to understand this is it's not about it being perfect uh, imperfect actions all together i love that let's write that down erin's yay for zines i agree uh okay great and you can all see that, I assume. So let's put uh, that down. So um, any, let me get more specific then as we move towards wrapping this up. Uh, what do we need to build on? Like, how can we make this better if we continue to do it in the future? Do we need to keep doing it? Uh, and how? How can we make it better? What should we keep, improve? So I, I would say something about that, uh, reiterate uh, what has been mentioned earlier. Um, and it's something that I personally would probably want to do more of is would is to involve people who are not necessarily art in, in these activities. Um, I think that would help a lot. <laughs> I think it's great. Again, bridging the gap, right? Brilliant. Okay, anybody else? Um, this um, sort of forum, I think, is really important uh, just uh, to wrap up uh, the actions. Uh. Yeah, I agree. I, I know that they can be a bit of a hassle and a bit painful. and We're often not used to just sitting down and particularly online doing this for uh, extended periods. But I think that without coming together as this global community, we can't harness our real power that we have. And, I, and we do have power. It's, it's constantly astounding to me that we have a collective of, you know, 50 plus artists from all over the world. And then a lot of people associated with us and together as a group, we are so powerful. I was absolutely astounded by the success of the day of action, actually, how many people were involved, how many of you came together for it, contributed. Uh, and it got a lot of traction. Like, I was really amazed. So, yeah, let's not forget that. Great. Anybody else? Erin's saying that Simpaka wants to provide more information uh, and art expression in their own languages. And I think this is something that is really hard to talk about in some ways because micro galleries is so dependent on everybody communicating in English. So as a global community, we understand that, you know, it does perpetuate a kind of creative colonization. Um, so I think this is a really important thing that, and, and especially as a colonized country uh, for you guys, Erin. So she goes on to say, so that people affected can understand what is happening, especially when they don't understand scientific terms. Yeah, I mean, it's hard enough to understand this stuff, let alone doing it in your second, third, fourth language. I, I think that's a really great point. And um, I wish we were more resourced so we could make this happen, but maybe as a global community, we can start to make things like this happen. Even across communities, for example, in London, I suspect there's loads of people who speak uh, Indonesian, Malaysian, a range of different uh, languages, and it'd be great to start cross-delivering our work to reach those communities, potentially. Okay, um, so in uh, the final couple of minutes, wh what do you think we could do better? I mean, obviously things wouldn't have worked. It's a pilot year. It's, it's a pilot subject for many of you, as you've mentioned today. What, what do you need? What could work better to do this project again? Sorry, to be more specific, not my forte. Yeah. 
You know, I think with you dealing with global times have done a fantastic job. I mean, you've got everybody all over the world and all these time zones and we can't all be in the same place at the same time. And you're doing your best to provide everything you can for us. So yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, everyone did such an amazing job. Like I'm such an idiot when it comes to, despite the fact that I work in time zones across them all the time, talking to people, trying to get all these times worked out. When I realized the time stretch from Fiji to Hawaii, I could have died. And if it wasn't for Olga, Brian, Sarah and Dara coming on board and the online assault on that day for 48 hours of content was just extraordinary across four platforms, email, several email accounts, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and uh, the team managed it. They did it for no, everyone did all of this for no money. The whole project happened for seriously uh, like a few thousand Australian dollars. So um, yeah, just such an extraordinary group of people that I've gathered around me that enabled us to be able to do that. It was incredibly exhausting. So thank you so much for noting uh, that so many people don't realize what goes into pulling off something like this. And I really appreciate it when people do. Um, and anybody who ever does a 24 hour project, please note it actually means 48. <laughs> like, it was amazing. But watching works roll across the earth was one of the most inspiring things I've ever been involved in. Um, I know we've done a lot of projects, but watching the amazing Sarah do in Fiji kick off a mural and Papua New Guinea doing their thing down on the beach, covered in uh, wet mud and sand. And then having Alan and uh, Matt finish up in Hawaii with sea level 2080 as the sun was setting was just actually quite beautiful. It felt like the environment was therefore part of everything we were doing. And I felt like that was powerful for sure. Thanks, Jenna. Um, okay, final comments anyone wants to make about absolutely anything that's relevant to this subject matter. Uh, yes, that's for you all. Oh, Wilson, we love you. You're so amazing. I wish I could draw hands to draw clapping. I cannot. Uh, Aaron saying, uh, it was great. Uh, and please continue. We'd love to join more projects. And I think that's something very special that's come from this as well. It's not just about our collective. There's so many amazing people out there working and doing things. Um, Valeriana, you're an amazing soul. She's put up, she obviously thinks it's, you know, she thinks it's awesome. I know you can all see this, but just to reiterate. So everyone thinks it was great. I mean, this is a bit of a shock. I felt like there were going to be a lot of problems and I'm sure they were, and you're just too nice to say, but really appreciate uh, you all not only being involved in a project for, minimal resources and funding as usual, but that you could make the time to be part of a forum like this. Um, again, I know it's really difficult, but I think one thing that all of us as a community do really, really well is reflect. And I've often found it's through the reflection that uh, we, we find some amazing magic and strength. Um, it's a really difficult environment to be out there doing arts, particularly doing arts in um, developing countries. So uh, there's very few resources for all of us, but again, I think together we're stronger. I really hope that's not some weird American political slogan I've subconsciously absorbed and just regurgitated to you, but I do believe in it, sadly. So I wanna thank you all for being uh, here and being part of this. I hope it was a little bit fun, a little bit informative, uh, not too overwhelming in any way, uh, and worth your time, I really, Time is everything right now for most of us. So I really appreciate your time, your efforts, your thoughts, and most of all, the creative energy you've been putting into absolutely everything we're trying to do as a community. Very grateful. Um, unless anybody has any final words, um, I'm gonna wrap this up. Great. You've been- I just um, wanted to say something. <laughs> yes, That's okay. Uh, I just wanted to say again, thank you for involving me and uh, I just wanted to say that it's uh
privilege to be able to work uh, together with a global community and certainly that's not something that happens every day so thank you <laughs> well, we're so grateful you're involved we're just all of you are just the most incredible contributors and supporters of the collective and the concept exceptionally honored to have had you all here for the hour and a half we had today Thank you so much. Uh, much love to you all. I'm going to end the meeting now. Any questions, anything, email me. Uh, thank you for those, Jenna, uh, who stayed up really late. Olga, who got up crazy early. We really appreciate it. Much uh, gratitude to you all and have a fantastic day, night, whatever. Thank you. See you all later.